Okay, so for homework, I asked you guys to graph the equation in number nine using your intercepts, be sure to label your axes. And then in 10, um, it says, what's the maximum number of cars they could have washed? Explain how you know. So um, let's talk about how we're gonna graph this. So first, what's the equation we're looking at is three x plus five y equals 179. So that's in standard form. We want to graph that. We can graph it um, a bunch of different ways, but this one's asking us to graph using our intercepts. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to figure out um, what is the value when x is zero? What are the value when y is zero? That's how we know our intercepts. We're going to have one on the x-axis, one on the y-axis. So each time x will be zero or y will be zero. But didn't we actually already calculate that? If I flip back to what we were doing earlier today, didn't we already figure out how much, um, if it was possible, if we only washed cars? So that would mean there were no trucks. That's our situation where y is equal to zero. So this part right here, um, we already calculated our x-intercept. We figured out x would be 59.6. So right from here, we get our intercept 59.6 repeating, comma zero. So that's our x intercept. We could go back and substitute in zero, but we already did the work, so why would we do it again? We could substitute in zero, or cover over the 5y, 3x equals 179 divided by 3, x equals 59.6. So we already calculated our x intercept which means we probably also already calculated our y-intercept. Down here, when we looked at only washing trucks, there were no cars, or x was equal to zero, we figured out the y-intercept, figured out that y would have to be 35.8. Now, it didn't really make sense in our story, but these can still be graphed, even though they didn't make sense in our story. So if I wanna graph my y-intercept, it's gonna be zero, because x was zero this time, and 35.8. So there, those are two points that I can graph on my graph. I just have to figure out what my scale is going to be. So I have to figure out how many boxes I'm going to count by. So I'm going to go back to the graph. So I have my two intercepts. So my first one, x-intercept, I'm glad that I'm in a second, was 59.6 repeating comma zero. In our y-intercept, was 0, 35.8. So I've got to graph those two. So that means I've got to be able to go up to th a little over 35 on my y-axis, and I've got to go up to almost 60 on my x-axis. So if I look at the boxes, I'm going to see how many there are. So on the x-axis, what did x stand for again? Um, at the beginning, we defined our variable x as the number of cars. So down here, I'm going to say number of cars wash because we always want to have our title okay and then that's going to get go down at the bottom under the x where the independent variable goes so then on the side i'm going to write over here number of trucks washed because that's our dependent variable in this situation because we made it y okay and maybe we're going to title our graph. Let's just title it MLC Car Wash. All right. There we go. So let's count the boxes here for the number of cars. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There's 20 boxes, so I can't really go by ones because I need to get all the way to 60. I could go by threes. Threes aren't really nice numbers. It might be nicer to go by fives. I could count each box as five, so I could start here with zero on the corner, like we always do, and then I can go each box as five. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and I have to write kind of small, 45, 50, 55, 60. I'm not going to go any farther than 60 because I really don't need any numbers bigger than that. 
So I could actually plot my x-intercept right now. 59.6 is almost 60. So it's going to be just a hair under 60. It's going to be right on the x-axis. So we're going to make a point right here. Actually, let me do that in color here so you can see it better. Okay. So as close as you can get to 60, not exactly being on 60. It's an estimate. So whenever I have not nice numbers on a graph, I'm always making an estimate. I'm doing my best to be as accurate as possible. All right, so that's my x-intercept. When I want to go on my y, I have to go up to 35. There's, it's, this is square, so I know that there's 20 going this way also. Um, I can count by fives again. I could space it out a little bit more and count every other box as five. Um, really, it doesn't matter. I want to kind of spread it out if I can. So maybe I'll go by um, five. So I'll skip a box, five. Skip another box, 10. Skip a box, 15. Skip a box, 20. Skip a box, 25. Skip a box, 30. Skip a box, 35. Skip a box, 40. Uh, I'm going to just finish it, 45 and 50. And so for my y-intercept, I have to get 35.8. So it's like a hair above 35. So just, 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 just past 35. Make that a little bit bigger with my marker here. So there's my two intercepts. Now if I want to graph this, i got to connect the dots and graph my line. Do it in marker so you can see it. Put arrows on both ends. And so this graph represents the function for the car wash that they had at MLC where they raised $179. So we have this graph here. I'll show you the whole thing. Um, it's a decreasing graph. So that means as I go across, as the number of car, more there are more cars getting washed, the number of trucks is decreasing. So as I wash more and more cars, I can wash less and less trucks. And that's all because we're bound to the fact that they only made $179. We don't know any other information about exactly how many cars or exactly how many trucks, but we know that the combination that literally did happen, however many cars and however many trucks, can be found somewhere along this line. So if I were to go over to 40 cars, I could go up and approximate about how many trucks that would be by using my graph. If I wanted to know 30 cars about how many trucks that would be, I could use my graph. So all of those points, even the ones that we calculated earlier, 22 trucks and 23 cars, those exist on this line. If I were to go over to 23 cars and I go up, I'm about at 22 trucks. So there's a point right here, 22. Um, 23. And so all of those whole number points fall on this line. Also all of the non-whole number points fall on the line, all the decimals and everything in between. So there's going to be some values along the line that make a little bit more sense. And there's going to be some that um, aren't really going to have sense in our scenario. So we're only going to focus on the ones that make sense. So now when we look at the second question, number 10, what's the maximum number of cars that could have been washed. Now we know from when we were looking at the other work over here, we said there's no way that it could be all cars and no trucks because 59.6 cars didn't make sense. But if we go just a hair under that, say they washed one truck, could all the rest be cars? Could it be 59 cars and one truck? We could, we could see if we can figure that out. So if I want to know, i got to use that same equation, 3x plus 5y equals 179. I want to figure out what's the most number of cars that they could have washed. I, want to, I could even look on my graph up here and say it's somewhere up here. It's some whole number up here by 55, right? So that means the truck number has to be pretty low. It has to be under 5. So we could try one truck and see what we get. So 3x plus 5 times one truck equals 179. So 3x plus 5 equals 179. Subtract my 5 from both sides. And the 5s will cancel out. I'll get 3x equals 174. And we'll divide by 3. 
So when I go look at my calculator, 174 divided by 3 is 58. So if one truck was washed, 58 cars were washed. One truck was washed, 58 cars were washed. So here's my sentence. Now, I know that it can't be any more cars, because that would mean less trucks, and we already figured out it couldn't be zero trucks. So the smallest amount of trucks we could have washed is one truck, which means the most amount of cars we could have washed is 58. So since we have to have washed at least one truck, then 58 was the most number, maximum number. Number of cars we could have washed. So we're thinking along the lines of the fact that we know it couldn't be no trucks, so it had to be at least one truck. And when I plugged in one truck, it came out to a whole number of cars, so I know that works. One truck, 58 cars. Two trucks, some other number of cars. But as I get more and more trucks, the cars are gonna go down. So the least number of trucks is gonna give me the most number of cars, so that's why I stuck with one. Now, I'd love for you to, to flip to the back and try to do number 11. It's kind of the same question, but it's reversing it in the other direction. So think through it, try to figure it out, um, pause the video for right now, and then come on back and I'll go over how to do the last one.